Hello everyone, this article is going to be very brief and it's just about injection timing on port injected engines, not covering direct injection engines at this point. Injector timing on the modular ECUs is mapped against RPM and load, and the number represents the end of the injection pulse in degrees before top dead centre. On a staged injection engine, you can define the injection timing for the different stages separately to promote better mixing, minimise water hammer effects and so on. In terms of working out the best angle for injection timing, there are a few possible ways to do it, and in some ways it actually depends on what you're trying to optimise. So one technique I've seen people do is to keep the amount of fuel delivered constant and then adjust the injection timing to give the richest mixture. Now, you'd think that this would indicate the best, the most complete combustion because there'd be the least amount of air left over. Now, I don't know what that actually corresponds to in the real world. I mean, you'd expect that might mean minimum emissions or maximum torque or something like that. Both sound reasonable, but I haven't actually measured that myself to be able to confirm that. Now, in a lot of cases, what the OEMs do is they do what's called closed valve injection. So they actually finish the injection pulse before the intake valve opens. So this normally requires a value in the table of about 380 degrees or higher. And what I've found is that for off-idle throttle response, injection timing actually seems to make a big difference and values of about 380 degrees seem to work pretty well on piston engines. Now, throughout medium to high RPM conditions and on load, injection timing can make a difference to the torque that's produced. Uh, what I've found is that on production engines, it doesn't really seem to make that much difference at all. But on high overlap engines, especially if you've got big injectors, it can actually make quite a big difference. Now, another application for changing injection timing is to minimise emissions. So, for example, if you have an engine which has got big cans and you're trying to get it through emissions, then often what you'll need to do is inject the fuel after the exhaust valve is actually closed. So this means actually injecting the fuel later than you otherwise would. And what it means is that less uh, raw fuel can get straight out the exhaust on the lower vacuum or you know, higher load conditions. Now in tuning cars for emissions, I've found this has made a big difference, but the only way you'd be able to see it is with a four or five gas analyzer. Now what I've found with rotaries is that they seem to like about 180 degrees before top dead center as their injection timing and that seems to give good transient response. That's for side port engines which are, um, you know, have got a, a bit of a port to them but nothing too extreme. But if it's a naturally aspirated peripheral port engine with a lot of overlap, then the injection timing is going to be a lot more critical. Um, I found that on side port engines, injection timing doesn't really seem to change torque all that much at all. Now, one last thing, on a stage injection engine, you can change the injection timing between the different stages. So I tried this on my 13B turbo before she went to a better place, but what I discovered was it didn't really make any difference to torque production at all. However, one tuner that I know who I respect said that it has made a very big difference on his engines that he's tuned. And so the options there, if you want to use it, at the very least what you can do is you can set it so that there's a bit of a split in the angles so that you don't get multiple sets of injectors closing at the same time and contributing to water hammer in the fuel rail. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.